what the cannoli is to Italy, so the Twinkie is to the USA. And despite an apparent legion of detractors and a brief vacation from store shelves between 2012 and 2013, the Twinkie still stands proudly as a symbol of American culture ingenuity and love of food that can't possibly be good for you. Join us now for a tour of the secret life of the Twinkie. Childhood is a time of experimentation and searching for the person we want to be when we grow up. The octogenarian Twinkie is no different. When it was younger, it too had to find itself. Born in 1933 as a way to make use of seasonally unemployed snack-making machines, the Twinkie first hit stores containing not the familiar vanilla cream filling, but rather a totally punk banana cream filling. As far as childhood fads go, this one lasted quite a while. But before the Twinkie could become a surly teenager, World War II began and switched off America's supply of bananas. Left without its favorite ingredient, the Twinkie had no choice but to get sensible, and there are fewer more sensible or popular flavors than vanilla. By the time bananas started to become available, again, the vanilla cream Twinkie was so popular, there was no point going back. The Twinkie is no ordinary cake. Despite seeming like the softest, creamiest dessert when you open the packet, the fact that it can sit on an unrefrigerated shelf for a disturbingly long time and still come out soft and creamy means there's something else going on. This is what I think of your store! <laughs> Silly customer! You cannot hurt the Twinkie! But this remarkable longevity is no accident. Instead, it's the result of some remarkable science that makes the humble Twinkie the equivalent of the six million dollar man. But unlike Steve Austin, the Twinkie didn't need to crash an experimental plane to gain his advancements. Many of the ingredients that you would expect to be in a cake, like eggs, milk, and butter, are not in a Twinkie because they spoil too easily. Instead, the Twinkie's creators substituted those ingredients with some less perishable ones, like diacetyl, sodium steroyal lachylate, polysorbate 60, and even more of your childhood favorites. And while Mr. Austin might be better at jumping, running, and being a secret agent, when you're in the mood for something creamy and satisfying to put in your mouth, you're probably gonna choose a Twinkie. Now that's the stuff. There's a right time for snacks, and I say when. Then I insist on Hostess, because they're always so fresh. Despite what urban legends and creepy ladies in commercials would have you believe, the Twinkie will not stay fresh forever. In fact, the shelf life of a Twinkie as of 2016 is only 45 days, according to NPR. But even though the Twinkie isn't the answer to your post-apocalyptic prayers, that's still pretty good stamina for a small confection. And it's definitely tougher than most of the fashionable natural food you buy, like the tomato. So as long as you're within 45 days of the apocalypse, feel free to eat Twinkies like your life depends on it. But if you come across them too long after that, it might be best to save them for your dog. Considering its place in pop culture, you may not be surprised to learn that the humble Twinkie has occasionally appeared in some big screen adventures. It appeared in the 1989 cult hit UHF starring Weird Al Yankovic as, well, Weird Al. But this time named George. In the film, he tries to cheer up his friend with some help from our spongy yellow buddy. In Ghostbusters, Egon uses a Twinkie to describe an overabundance of psychokinetic energy in New York City. In Die Hard, they become a running joke and their usual composition becomes a topic of conversation. What did they put in these things anyway? Sugar and rich flour, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, polysorbate 60, and yellow dye number 5. And in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, the confection is used to lure Genghis Khan into the future. You wanna switch to Genghis Khan? <laughs> In 1978, Dan White, a cop-turned-politician in San Francisco, shot and killed Mayor George Moscone as well as gay rights campaigner and fellow politician Harvey Milk in a dispute over his position as a city supervisor. White's defense team claimed he should not be held fully responsible for the murders, since he was severely depressed at the time. To support this claim, the defense highlighted a formerly health-conscious defendant's consumption of junk food, including Twinkies, as evidence of a dramatic change in his mental health. Don't you have any respect for yourself? This is absolutely gross. Despite Twinkies being mentioned exactly once during the trial, the press reported that defense had blamed White's depression state almost entirely on eating Twinkies, spawning the term Twinkie defense. Dan White claimed he shot milk because he ate too much junk food that day. This would later be known as the Twinkie defense. Is that for real? Twinkie-centric or not, the defense strategy worked. White was actually acquitted of murder and was nailed for voluntary manslaughter instead. Great job. Despite being an innocent bystander, guilty of nothing more than keeping bad company, the Twinkie is now mentioned every time a defense lawyer attempts a Hail Mary argument, and all it was ever trying to do was make people happy. And maybe a little less hungry. Yahoo! The fresh snacks with a snack in the middle! In 1971, almost two decades before the Twinkie's acting career reached its brief apogee, it actually held down a regular role, playing a heroic cowboy called Twinkie the Kid. 
popular with the children? Probably. The animated kid went around saving the day and handing out Twinkies everywhere he went, all in the name of boosting sales and consumption of Twinkies. Which, when you think about it, is more than a little creepy. Because, you know, Twinkie the Kid is a Twinkie. It's like if KFC's mascot wasn't Colonel Sanders, but instead was a mad homicidal chicken looking to put an end to chicken kind once and for all. Or in an even better example, Twinkie the Kid is kind of like whatever this guy is. <laughs> On second thought, Twinkie the Kid is way less disturbing. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite things are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.